Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a book in Lightroom. Not only am I going to demonstrate how to create a book in the book module of Lightroom Classic, I'm going to send that book off to Blurb to be printed. And once I get it back, I'll do a follow-up video showing you the book so you could see how it came out. Now, the first thing you need to do is decide what you want in your book. Once you decide what you want in your book, you need to create a collection. Go to the library module. And then in the Collections tab, click the little plus sign, Create Collection, give it a name, and then click Create. Then go through all the folders in your library and drag all the images you want in that collection into that collection. So just drag and drop. I've already created a collection called Primates. I'm going to create a book of all the primate images I've taken, and I have them in that collection. Now this next step is optional. You may want a title or a caption under that image in your book. It's easier to add the titles and captions in the metadata in the library module. So once you have the images in your collection, stay in the library module, click on metadata, and you can see right here I have a title, Western Lowland Gorilla. I don't have a caption, but I could or I could have Western Lowland Gorilla in the caption if I prefer. And you can see that as I click through the images, there's a Bornean orangutan, and there is a tufted capuchin. So you could add that to the metadata now. Now once you're ready, you have your images in the collection. If you wanted any of that metadata added, you have it added. You could go over to the book module. Now, when I click on the book module, one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to auto-populate a book with all the images that are in the collection, or it's going to sit there and do nothing. Let's see. We'll click, and it auto-populated. Now, if it doesn't auto-populate, what you could do is go to the right-hand panel, click on Auto Layout, and click Auto Layout, and it will automatically do what it just did on my computer. We're going to change everything around everything anyway, rearrange, but it is nice to have it auto-populated because it's easier to keep track of what images you have in your book and maybe you missed an image here or there and you don't have it in the book. This way you know every image is up here now. Also in the film strip, you'll see that each image has a little one at the top. That means it's in the book once. Uh, if you saw two, that means you have it in there twice. If you don't see that block there at all, that means you don't have that image in your book. All right, now what type of book? Go to book settings, click this drop down. You can see there's three different types of blurb books. The first one is the blurb photo book. That's the one I'm going to create. It's the most common book. It gives you the best opportunity to have the highest quality paper and the highest reproduction of your image. It is the most expensive of the three different blurb books. Below that is a blurb magazine. That is, as the name implies, a magazine. It's going to be vertical format only. So I have landscape images. They wouldn't fit well in a magazine. It uses a bit lower quality paper. Uh, the printing isn't quite as good, so it's cheaper. Below that is a blurb trade book. Blurb trade book. Uh, that's the cheapest of the three options. This is meant to be like a mass production book. Um, often this book will have more text in it than it does maybe the other two, the magazine and the photo book. Uh, so this would be more like maybe an instructional book. You have an image and you're talking about the area. Maybe it's a travel book. So you have an image, then you have a bunch of text talking about, you know, Santorini or something like that. Or maybe um, it's a photo how-to book and you have a photograph and you're talking about how to capture that type of image. So that's what that photo trade book is for. Now below that we have PDF. If you're not using Blurb, to print your book, you're using a different publisher, they may require a PDF of the images. If that's the case, you would choose that. Or JPEG. The publisher may want individual JPEGs of the images. If that's the case, then you choose that. Now I'm going to choose that first one, Blurb Photo Book. And when I do that, you can see I have a front cover and a back cover now. 
but there's different types of book or different sizes of books. We have a small square that's a seven by seven inch, a standard portrait book, eight by 10, so that's a vertical format. We have a standard landscape that's a 10 by eight. That's the most popular book. So that's more, you know, if you have a lot of landscape images, you would prefer that book. Large landscape, 13 by 11, and a large square book, 12 by 12. Of course, those are more expensive. Let's go with the standard landscape, 10 by eight. So I'm gonna click on that. It needs to redo our layout here because we have square PDF type layout. We're gonna go to this image layout now, and you can see it did that. Now, as far as the cover is concerned, do you want just a hard cover image wrap? That means you're just gonna have an image on the front cover and an image on the back cover. Or do you want a dust jacket? Of course, if you're buying a book from a bookstore from a relatively famous photographer, let's say Ansel Adams, that book will most likely have a dust jacket on it. Below that is a soft cover book. So you have two hard cover choices and one soft cover choice. Now I'm gonna choose the dust jacket only because that is the most difficult of the options to do. And I wanna show you the most difficult option. So we're gonna do dust jacket. Now type of paper, the most common is premium luster. That's a very good paper. It's like, you know, almost the best. Um, of course, all these choices affect the price. Right now, as we stand with a dust jacket, standard landscape, I'm looking at 4419 estimated price for these number of images. If um, I add more images, it will cost more. If I use a different paper, it may cost more. Of course, this price doesn't include shipping and tax. So let's look, talk about these papers. Premium luster is the most common. It's gonna have a little bit of a sheen to it. Premium matte is still the same quality paper, but it's not gonna have a sheen to it. Pro line uncoated, won't have a sheen, but it's a better paper. Pro line pro photo the best paper available and it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Standard is the cheapest of the options. If I click on that, you'll see we'll go from $44.19 to $36.99. Um, and a standard lay flat. This is a lay flat book. Of course, normal books, when you open them up where the spine is, there's gonna be a little bulge there. If you don't want that, you're gonna want the lay flat option. When you click on that, it's gonna want to change the setting. I don't wanna do that. So. Uh, that is an option. I'm going to use the most expensive paper, the ProLine Pro Photo, just so when I do get the book, you could see what that paper looks like. And it is the most expensive option by far. Now, logo page. Let's go down here and look at this last page right here. And I'm going to show you that. And you can see it says Blurb designed using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. That is the logo. If you allow them to print that in your book, you'll save up to 20% on the price of the book. That depends on what book you use, the amount you save, depends on what book you choose and the options. If I turn this off, watch, we'll go from 56.39 to 65.64. So considerable savings. I'm gonna leave it on. I don't care if they print it. So I want that there. All right, so those are the options I'm going to use on my blurb photo book. Now, some navigation things. First of all, you'll notice I have the left panel closed. I suggest you close yours as well. You don't need it uh, when you're in the book module. Now, uh, if, for instance, I don't want this image here, I want it over here. All I need to do is click on that image, drag it, and then it will swap that image for that image. If I want this entire two-page sp spread to be, let's say, later in the book, click on one image, hold the shift key down, click on the other image, so you have this solid yellow bar going across the bottom, grab that yellow bar, and then you could put this anywhere you want, like right there, and then it just moves everything up. So you could navigate or move images around that way. Um, also, uh, you could come in the film strip and drag images from the film strip up to the image holders and put images in that way if you prefer. And um, that's pretty much the navigation thing. Now, as far as looking at the images, right now we're in the entire book view. If you look at the toolbar, this little piece of real estate is called the toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key toggles that off and on. We need it on because we have different views. We have the entire book view. Then we have a layout view. That's going to show the images side by side. You may want that because you want images that complement one another 
not clash with one another. And then next to that is a single image view. You may want that because especially when you add text, it's hard to see the text unless you're zoomed in a little bit more like that. But what I suggest you do is learn the keyboard shortcuts because the keyboard shortcuts for these different settings is a, it's a lot easier than going down to the toolbar and clicking on them. And the keys sit next to one another on the keyboard. The keys are ERT and you just add the modifier key command if you have a Mac or control if you have a PC. So command E on a Mac or control E on a PC gives you the entire book view. Commander control R gives you the page layout and commander control T gives you the single image view. So just learn those keyboard shortcuts. It'll save you a lot of time and it's a lot easier. Now let's go in and talk about editing individual images. Let's click on this first image in the book and I want to go to the single image view. So I'm going to hit command T on my Mac, control T on a PC. Uh, this is a landscape image, but it's showing it in full screen, no border. I want to see all the image. I'm going to have a border around it. To change the layout, click right here on this little drop down and you could see you could modify the page and there's one or single photo images. So there's this one right here. It's right in the middle and it's landscape and there it is. So it just put my image right there. I like that better. Now I could bring it out further. I don't want it right to the edge, but you see this box. This is like the safe area to put text in. All right. I could pull it all the way out to there by just grabbing a handle and dragging it to the edge and dragging this one to the edge. Now you notice it's kind of going click, click. That's because if you go over here to guides, I have it set to grid snap grid. So it's going to snap to the grids. To turn those all on, we could see them right here and you could see those little squares and I could just click it and click it over and that is the way I prefer to do it. So you could experiment with this and I keep those off. Don't worry if you have them on. When you print your book, they won't show up. They're just there to help you put the image on there. Now, that's great. I have this image here. I'm going to hit command E to get the entire book view again. Now let's go over uh, to this image. This is another horizontal image. If I hit uh, command T, right, and I go to this drop down and I go back down here to this one again, I have to click on it and drag it all out again, right? You know, that's a hassle, right? Let's go back to the original template. What we could do, because I did that once already, if I go back to the entire book view and click on this and then go to Command T, what we could do, because this one's set up the way I want it, click this little drop down, oh no, I don't want to do that, is go right on the image, right click, and then save as custom page. Now, when I go to back to the entire book view, then click on this image and then click on that single image. I could go to this drop down and see custom pages. It's right there. Click on it and it already has it sized the way I want it and placed where I want it. So that is a real time saver. Create those custom pages. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you uh, very quickly is I have some images that are vertical. And uh, what I want to do is put those both on a page by themselves or next to one another. Now to do that, let me see if I can find two. I think actually these two might be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Actually, why don't I go to Command R? There we go. Oh, didn't want to do that. Command E. Bear with me, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll click on this. Command R, there we go. All right, now here. If we click on this drop down, we go to two photo layout and I could find, you can see there's two photos with text over under. I want this side by side one. Now you could see that this is right there. I could zoom it all the way out or I could just click on it and drag it and move it around. I want it right about there. Then I could drag another image up in here uh, for this vertical image. Actually, this one isn't a vertical image. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the book view and I'll find another vertical image, which is right here. And I'll just swap that or I'll just push that over there, drag it and it's in there. All right. And I'll go to command R and there you go. So I have those side by side. Now, 
if I want, instead of going to that drop down and then going to two photos and going to this every single time, I could put this as a favorite by clicking on this little circle. Now up in favorites, it is there. So it's easier to get to. I don't have to wade through other templates or page templates to get to it. I could just go and get it right away. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. And I have actually a couple square images here too. Let me just show you that very quickly. If I could see, this is a square image right here. I could do it right from here. Click this drop down. It's going to go to the one photo view. It's the square image is right here. Click that. And there, that square image fits in just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to arrange these the way I want them. And I, um, I could easily now do it. I have a custom page for my horizontal image. And in my favorites, I have the vertical image template I'm going to use. So I'm going to go and do this very quickly. And then when we come back, we'll do the front cover and back cover. Okay, I have the images laid out inside the book the way I want them. You can see that there's a number of vertical images that I doubled up on one page. So that gave me a number of empty pages. We need to get rid of these. Just click on one, hold the shift key down and click on each subsequent one. Then right click right on them and remove pages. And we'll remove those pages and it brought the price down slightly. Now, um, what we need to do is get an image for the front cover and an image for the back cover. Now, before I do that, what I would recommend you do is go through your film strip and just make sure that every image, assuming you want each image inside the book once, each uh, thumbnail in the film strip has a one at the top. If you don't see anything there, that means you don't have that image in there. And if you have any number higher than one, then you have multiple, that image in your book multiple times. So just double check that. Now, I want to have a back cover and a front cover. I want this image right here uh, for the front cover. You can see it's already here, but I'm going to have images on the front cover and back cover that are inside the book. So I'm just going to click and drag it up to the front cover. Now, if I just drag it to the middle and let go, nothing will happen. That's because there's these boxes here for adding text. What you need to do is get it underneath those. And to do that, just drag it up and just get it up there just far enough until you see a plus sign appear there and then let go. So there is our image on the front cover and the back cover image is I had one in mind, this one right here. So we're going to click on that one and going to drag it in. Same thing, just drag it up far enough till you see that plus sign and let go. So there's the back cover image. Now you can see that it has a two on it and the other one will have a two on it as well over here. So there is our cover. Now let's edit this. Um, we're going to hit command R. All right, so we see that. Now we have these boxes. I mentioned that's for text. Now look here, we have this thin black line. Because this is a dust cover, the actual front of the book is going to be to that black line. Then it's going to get folded over, and this part will be folded underneath the front cover. Similarly, on the back cover, this will be on the back cover, and this part will get folded over onto the back of the back cover, or the inside of the back cover. Now what I need to do is add the title of the book right here. Now, I could just start typing. Uh, this is a box where you could put type, and I'm going to call this primates, P-R-I-M-A-T-E-S. Now, you might not see it. It's right here. Now, what you could do is select all those letters by hitting Command or Control A on your computer, so they're all selected. Then go over to Type, and then just go to the size and make it larger so you could see it. Now, I'm not going to use the Myriad Pro. I'm going to use Georgia, I think, is the typeface. So we'll go to that. Okay. And we could make it a little bigger. Now, uh, what I can do is I could bring this box and make this box smaller. You can see it's black. We need to change the color as well. I don't want to use black typeface. It doesn't stand out as much. So we'll bring this in. Now I'm going to move it to the right, so grab this little handle in the middle. You can see when you hover over it, your hand, the cursor turns into a hand. So just move it over. And maybe right in there somewhere. Make it a little bigger maybe. Take this up to the edge. Make it a little bigger. Did I cut off my S? I think I cut off my S. No, I didn't. I didn't add an S. Okay. Oops. 
S. Wow, what is going on here? What I did is I must have cut stuff off. Let's just, there we go. I cut off the S, that's all. So we'll get rid of that. All right, and bring this in. You can see it's snapping to grid, so it kind of goes herky-jerky. Bring us over. All right, now we need to change the color. Click on where this little swatch is right there, and we're going to make it white. All right, and then I think I just want to get a little more size out of it. Oh, not that much. All right, there we go. It's kind of, it's still delayed and it's very aggravating. I'll tell you that much. Let's move it over just a little. All right, right there. I think we're done. Click on the gray part outside to see what it looks like. All right, it's okay. Now I want to add my name. So I need to add another box. Now it's, we most often will call it a text box. Adobe doesn't call it that. So what you need to do is right click, right? We're going to add cell photo description. That's what they call it. Now here we're going to add my name. So we'll make sure that's active. And I'm going to add Anthony. M-O-R-G-A-N-T-I. Select everything, hit Command or Control A. So it's completely selected. We could change the color right now by clicking on the swatch, make it white, and then make the size larger. Not that big. I want this considerably smaller than the title of the book. And if you don't see these four sliders here, there's a little triangle right here. Click on that, and this tracking slider, I could spread it out. So it kind of just looks a little cooler. All right, now I don't have to, but I'm going to bring this in. And bring this in up, I should say. And I'm going to go click in so I'm between the, the Y and the M and give it a little more space there, maybe. Eh, maybe not. Yeah, I, yeah, put a space there. There we go. Now, just move this up here, put it somewhere I like, right? Maybe right there. Click on the gray part outside, see what it looks like. And let's say for the sake of this video, that is good enough because we're running out of time. Now, this back cover, I'm not going to have any text here, but over here, I want to put my photo and I want to put a very short biography. Now to do that, I need to get a placeholder for the photo. To do that, just right click, right? Go down to add cell photo. And when you do that, you'll see this will happen. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scrunch this down. It's going to be very small. All right. And push it over here. Grab that handle. There we go. All right. Now I need to get a photo in there. I don't have a photo down here in the film strip. So what I need to do is I need to click out of the book module into the library module. I happen to have an image of me in a collection called Me. Go there and I'm going to just drag that into my Primates collection. Click back on that collection, then go back to the book module. Okay, now we're back where we started. Now I have my image right here. I could click on it in the film strip and drag it up here and put it in there. And then I could just resize it the way I want it. I want it small. All right, like that. All right, now I need to add a text block. So it's underneath that's going to be my short bio. So we're going to right click again and we're going to go to add cell, photo description. And again, we get this like ridiculously large block. Grab that, we'll put that under here somewhere. Maybe right there. Maybe move it over a little. Move it over this way a little. Being a little fussy. Now, somewhere here, I have just a short bio. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, hitting Command C on my Mac, Control C on a PC. Click in here, hit Command or Control V to paste it in there. It is black. We need to make it white. Hit Command A on my Mac. Go over to this again type area character click right here it's white 
right? I think we'll stay with that font uh, only because it's, I'm trying to go as quickly as possible. I know this isn't, this is really boring <laughs> for you. Let's click outside and see what that looks like. Um, all right, I want to move it all down a little bit. So I'm going to click on this box, make it active, hold the shift key down, click on this box to make them both active at the same time. I could then grab either handle in the middle and pull it down and over maybe a little like that. Click on the outside. Okay. Maybe again, hit. I want to move it back this way maybe and see what that looks like. All right, that I think is the way I want to go. So there is the cover. There's the entire cover, except for this part right here, the spine. We need to fix that. We need to put some, the title of the book in there. Now I'm going to put primate, so I'm going to make it all capital. So I'm going to press in the caps lock key and hit P-R-I-M-A-T-E-S. You can see it's right here. Select everything by hitting Command or Control A. Right, then we're gonna go over here and we're just going to center it first of all by clicking right here. Now you can see it's, it's to the right. We need it in the middle of the spine. That's right here, right? And uh, we're gonna go to the Georgia font again on this one, I think, there. And then we're going to make it bigger, but not so big that it goes outside of those lines that you may see. I don't know where it went, there it is. Select all again, make sure it's centered the way we want it. All right, so we get it down a little bit. And I think I'll go to the tracking and spread it out like that. Click on this gray part on the outside, see what that looks like. Make sure I spelled everything right, spelled my name right, spelled everything correctly down here. And that's almost done. We have this white spine, this white end. I want to change the color of that. So what you do is go to background, right? Click down here, background color, turn that on, click on this little swatch. I could choose any color I want. I could choose up here. I could choose over here and just click a color. Or if I want to choose a color that is already up here in one of these images, what I could do is hover over the color picker so the eyedropper appears. Click with the left mouse button, keep the left mouse button clicked in, and then when I go over the image, you could see I could copy a color from the actual image, like maybe right there. See what that looks like. Click there. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. I'm going to hit Command E, look at my entire book, and let it populate. All right, just double check everything's good. What you could do is click on, uh, let's say, the cover, hit Command R, and then you could use the right arrow key to go through each of the pages of your book, or you could hit right here and go through each page of your book and make sure everything is lined up the way you want it. You could see you have that kind of shadow in the middle here to give you an idea of what each of these pages will look like. And if there's any last minute changes you want to make, you could do it here. Just go through, make sure everything is the way you want it. Uh, one suggestion I do make is when you have a person or a, in this case a primate looking like in a direction don't let them look outside have them look if possible into the middle so you see uh, both of these um, this western lowland gorilla and this Japanese macaque are looking towards the middle at least their heads are tilted that way that usually is better they're looking towards the middle and so on this one is looking towards the middle that one you know I couldn't line everything up so that one's an exception and we'll go through and just make sure everything is the way you want it. And we're at the end of the book. All right, so we'll go back out to the entire book view. And now what you need to do is send it to Blurb to be printed. To do that, send book to Blurb. Click right here. Now it's saying, oh, this uh, image of me is a TIFF and it's uh, gonna have a transparency that it's gonna be opaque. I think it's actually okay. Um, it's, it's fine. So we're going to click OK. All right. 
Now, it's going to cost me $54.23. I need to put my email in here and my password if I have a Blurb account. I actually do, I think, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to click on forget password, get my Blurb password, and then I'll come back once I do all that. All right, I did my password thing. I'm logged in. Now, book title, it's just called Primates. And there's no subtitle, and it's my name as the author. All right, and we're going to click Upload Book. Now you can see that there's a progress bar in the top left-hand corner. It is uploading the book as is to Blurb. Um, once it does that, it's going to prompt me, I think, to pay for it. Um, so we'll see. I'll uh, fast forward the video so you don't have to watch it upload the book very slowly to Blurb. Okay, that actually took quite a while to upload, maybe close to four or five minutes. Um, I have a really fast internet connection. I didn't think it would take that long. And once it uploaded, it brought me to this page and it says your book is ready to buy or set up for sale. I'm not going to set it up for sale. I'm just going to buy it. So I'm going to click order. And then um, again, it's asking me about the photo paper. You could see that that was an $18.44 premium for that Pro Photo Pearl uh, paper and end sheet and so on. We'll just leave it as is. Um, one thing, if you look at the uh, photo up here, I had the font or the title of the book, Primates. You might be able to see it's really close to the edge. Even though I thought I had it pretty far away from that black line, it still looks like it's kind of close. So we'll see once uh, we print it. So what I'm going to do now is you don't need to see the rest. I'm going to add this to the cart and I'm going to order it. And hopefully within a couple weeks, um, I'll get the book. And once I get the book, I'll do that video to show you how it came out. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>